Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Yeah, once again, it's time for Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski along with Mike Kapler, sitting back and having some casual conversation about the grace of God. And, you know, we've been talking, Cap, about something that, you know, in in many churches when uh, they say, here, we're going to be talking this week or we're going to start a series for the next several weeks on giving. (laughs) How many people shrink back and uh kind of like oh no um i think i want to go visit grandma next week or something you know you know just do anything that i can do to get out of this place you know giving oh no you know it's (laughs) it's and and how many times is it preached with the purpose of trying to quote convict people to give, you know, it's always trying to get people to give, and and so they find out they find all these verses that talk about giving, and anyway, hopefully, we've offered for the last few weeks, we've offered a different perspective. You know, we of course want to encourage people to give. It, giving is a part of our nature. You know, God is a giver. God so loved the world that He gave, and that's true. But he didn't give his son. He did. It's not that God so loved the world that he gave so that we would be convicted to give. You know, no, it's just that we have now received his nature in Christ Jesus. And in various ways, we're, we're all given the ability in one way or another, whether it's financially or whether it's through our time or whether it's through you know, any number of other ways. You know, we, of course, encourage people to, to give in the ways that God has enabled them to give. And it's, you know, pretty much for me, it's that simple. Yeah, it's really a shame that people, and I probably have it too, one of those defense mechanisms kicks in on the inside when you hear somebody say, we're going to talk about giving now. It shouldn't be that way. If we were taught the way that uh, God would have intended for us to understand what giving is all about, it would actually be something that's exciting, something to look forward to, something to want to participate in. But you're right, a lot of people have the negative reaction. I even talked to one guy when they were doing a series on giving at his church, He skipped the services and went and bonded with his mother-in-law. That's how bad it can be. (laughs) Oh, man. That's something that you just don't want people to have to go through. (laughs) No. So we will, as we talk here, we will— By the way, if my mother-in-law ever hears this, I love you. (laughs) We will talk more about giving. We're we're still kind of finishing up some things uh, as we talk about tithing. And, Joel, I I know that you feel like you could probably go on for weeks and months with this. And who knows where we'll, we'll cut this off. But— just trying to help people understand uh, the difference between the old covenant way of tithing and, and what is intended for us now under the new covenant, which is different. And remember, we're under a new and a better covenant. Now, we talked last week in Hebrews 7. If you didn't catch it, go back and listen to it. We talked about Melchizedek. In fact, Joel even created a n- new book of the Bible. Go back and listen. You'll hear it. Melchizedek, the book of Melchizedek. I like to call him Mel. Mel. Now, Joel, you don't know him as well as I do, so you call him Mr. Kizedek, please. Yeah, Mel, and his last name is Kizdek, and and yeah. you know, chat. If you ever read Melchizedek, make sure you read chapter seven. That's that's the important thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Let us know how that works out for you. Yeah, you know, I a while back I, I wrote a series on my blog, and you can go to my blog from graceroots.org. I wrote a series on the tithe. It actually ended up being a, a ten part series. When I was writing that thing, I learned without a doubt how to spell Melchizedek. <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote it so many different times because, you know, what we talked about last week, to me, that's an important thing because I think it's one of those verses, one of those passages that gets ripped way out of context. And and so I was writing Melchizedek, and I really learned how to spell it. But, you know, uh, if I would have thought about that, I would have just wrote Mel, and people would have known what I meant. Yeah. After, yeah. you know, you say yeah. Mel, and you say, put in abbreviations, Mel, and then they, they get it. Joel has an exhaustive uh, blog on this, so if you ever want to check it out, do it, because it's pretty informative. And and you can imagine, after writing all that, how uh, captivated he is, obsessed, really, with Melchizedek. In fact, you know, one time at a Bible study, you know, people would say, well, if if you could talk with somebody now who has gone on, they've died, and if you could talk to somebody in heaven, who would it be? And Or, or a Bible character, who would it be? And, and people will say, like, well, the Apostle Paul, or or even Jesus, or... Adam or, you know, somebody like that. Whereas, what was Joel's answer? I'd like to talk to Melchizedek. Mel. 
Yeah, didn't he? He had a great movie, The Passion of the Christ. Oh, no, that was Mel Gibson. <laughs> oh, that was a different Mel. And wasn't he on Alice? No, that was that was Mel the Cook. Oh, stop. Man, I'm going way back with some of our listeners. Alice? What's How, <laughs> how did we get on Alice when we're sitting here talking about giving and tithing? Well, I don't I know. Think, uh, I don't know how we get into these things. But how about we <laughs> switch gears? <laughs> you know, and one, one reason that we're doing this, of course, is because, you know, as, as we've mentioned, some of these passages, when the subject of giving comes up, we find all these verses about giving, and we just r- rip them right out as if, right there, that verse or that passage is in and of itself uh, a passage on giving or on tithing. And we mentioned, uh, you know, Jesus. Jesus talked about the tithe. You know, I actually heard somebody, a televangelist one time, he was talking about the tithe, and he was encouraging all his audience to tithe to him. <laughs> and, and he said, now Jesus mentioned the tithe. Jesus mentioned the tithe. And so, see, we are meant to tithe. And that's all he said. You know what? There's truth. There, he spoke a half-truth there, which is really a lie. Jesus did mention the tithe. But let's look at these these couple of times when... And it, they might actually be one, you know, two accounts of the same story, but I'll just read them real quick here. Luke 11, hey, hey, 42. Joel, yeah. Joel be- before you jump into the red letter edition, <laughs> one of the reasons why people respond that way is because, you know, people will say, well, tithing isn't really in the New Testament. And then, you know, somebody like this pastor will say, well, it is in the New Testament, and Jesus said it. Again, the New Covenant wasn't ratified until after Jesus' death and his resurrection. Um, it, it didn't start at the beginning of Matthew, even though we have our Bible divided up that way from Old Testament and New Testament. Just because it's in the New Testament and these four books of the Gospel doesn't necessarily make it New Covenant. And plus, what you're talking about, what you're about to get into, is uh, something that, that is often pulled out of context anyway. Yeah, that's really important to note. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, so much of what is said there was was still Old Covenant stuff. It was before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we need to rightly divide the word of truth, so to speak, to uh, understand what Jesus is saying, who he's talking to, what the overall point is that he's making, and so many other things. And and so that's good. That's a good foundation for for sharing these, these scriptures here. Uh, Luke eleven forty two and Matthew twenty three twenty three. If you just take it right out of context, here's what Luke eleven forty two says. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He says, "But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone." So Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, "You ought to, yes, you should have tithed of all those things, but also done the other things too." Same situation in Matthew twenty three twenty three. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So right there, if we, if we think, if we're looking at these words of Jesus, thinking Jesus is giving a Christian teaching here, it does look like Jesus is telling people to go ahead and tithe and to do all these other things. But, you know, something tells me, Cap, that that's not what he's getting at. Well, it's not. And then he goes on to say, blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. That has always fascinated me. I've always thought that uh, a good legalistic ministry would be called uh, strain a gnat ministries. (laughs) But (laughs) woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but the inside uh, inside, uh, is full of extortion and self-indulgence. So, yeah, right there, though, Joel, he said it. Man, I mean, Jesus said it. Well, let me go on here. Well, actually, what you just read there in, in verse 23, these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So there he, he told them, Joel, he said, you should have tithed, but you, but you should have done some other things too. So there you have it. I, I guess, you know, we, we should tithe because Jesus said that, right? Isn't that what that pastor was talking about you referred to? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what he meant. He said, Jesus mentioned the tithe, and so, and so that means that we're supposed to tithe. But to take a look at the whole point of what Jesus was saying, I think we need to do that because... For example, Matthew 23, where I just got the one verse from. And that whole passage, man, he is going off on the Pharisees for a lot of different things. You know, And you mentioned some of the things that he said. He called them whitewashed tombs. They appeared clean, 
you know, from outward appearances, but they were really full of dead men's bones and uncleanness on the inside. You know, from the outward appearance, it, you know, bringing the tithes, basically, so they could be seen by others bringing their tithes. Uh, from outward appearances, they look clean, but Jesus was telling them that their ne negligence in other matters proved that they were really only self-righteous hypocrites. But his point there wasn't to try to get them to do, to do, to do, to do all these things. His point was to show them that even though they looked clean outwardly in some of the things that they were doing, they were really dead. They were really dead on the inside. And of course, we know that in order to become alive, in order to uh, not only appear righteous, but to literally be righteous on the inside, it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only by being made alive together with Christ. So again, this is before the cross. Jesus is talking to Jews. He's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, and he's trying to tell them that they fall short, even though they think that they're clean. All right. So yeah, I, and I think it was Steve McVeigh who, who said something like, you know, everything in the Bible is written for us, but not necessarily to us. I don't know if I have that quote just right, but I think it was something like that. That, does that sound right to you? Everything in the Bible is written, uh, yeah, everything's for us. I mean, you know, we can read the entire entire Bible, but it's not all written, it's not all directed at us. It's not all to us. Yeah. Right. And and I, I assume that uh, something you just said kind of made me think about this, but is it true that when they gave or when they tithed back at this time, that they, they did it in front of each other so they could all see what they were what they were giving? Yeah, I would imagine so. Well, I, I remember that, that, you know, the story of Jesus watching people give. And, and remember the woman who just gave the, the last of what she had, which was like in, in, in our money, Joel, it would be like the equivalent of just pennies. Mm -hmm. But she gave all that she had. The other thing to keep in mind here as we continue to talk about giving is that God isn't so much moved by the amount. You know, in other words, a, a guy who has $10 million, who, who gives 500000 of it, he gives 10% of it or whatever, that doesn't impress God more than the woman who gave all that she had, even though it was just a few cents. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, an, it's an attitude of the heart. It's, it's not just so much about the amount, even though that's what we look at, and sometimes we're required to in this world system. But um, God looks at it from a totally different perspective that, that I don't think we've caught on to yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I came up, maybe we'll talk about this next time, because I, I came up in my mind with a, with a scenario uh, where you've got two families of four, each making, even both families making the same amount of money, bringing in the same amount of income, but having completely different circumstances in their lives. And maybe I'll get into that just, just to kind of show how it's, you know, it, it's not the amount that you give. The circumstances in everyone's lives could be different. And so to set a percentage or to say that a person needs to give this amount, that's, of course, that's not the point at all. But like you say, it's, it's the attitude of the heart. God loves a cheerful giver. And so uh, plenty more to say on this. Like you said earlier, I don't know how many more programs we'll do on this, but we'll definitely pick up on, you know, talking more about this whole uh, thing about giving, uh, you know, grace giving, so to speak, on uh, Growing in Grace next time. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard weekly on Gracewalk Internet Radio and other online sources around the world. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.